Hello and welcome to this edition of the Workflow Series. My name is Aaron Kornblatt. I'm going to be your host for the next 45 minutes. I am extremely excited to get into today's topic, talking to you about DevLink. Now, we see returning members in the chat uh, at letting us know where you're joining us from. So we've got Jessica from Oklahoma. Welcome. Raheem, Hadi, Riley, Adi. So many folks, I appreciate each and every one of you for joining. I'm extremely excited to introduce how to get started with DevLink. Keep dropping where you're joining us from the chat. I saw some people waiting for, said someone was waiting for two hours. So uh, I appreciate you. I'm so excited uh, to bring you this kind of intro session into working with DevLink. Uh, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna welcome Victoria in just a moment. A few things, I just wanna talk about a few things before we kick this off. First off, I have a poll at the top asking you whether you're a Webflow developer or a React developer. And the reason is I wanna make sure we're catering the content to you. So, so far we've got 80% of you are Webflow developers. Uh, maybe I gotta expand it. Maybe all of you are other. We've got about a few React developers and uh, some folks who are neither. So my goal is to turn you into somewhat of a React developer today. Second point of, you know, let's call it housekeeping, if you will. Uh, go ahead and drop your name in the form that Nelson just dropped. You're gonna get your name and title at the end. Uh, it's a little special thing we do every workflow series. Uh, so yeah, so that's what uh, uh, you know. I wanted to kind of talk about before we jump into today's topic. Extremely excited. Uh, so just a few more folks are joining. Let me highlight a few here. Here we go. We've got uh, Hadi, Ferdy, welcome. So recognizing we've got Tom uh, from Norway, Dimitri, Mahmoud. Uh, you've been waiting for days. So have I. This has been the highlight. This is going to be the highlight of my week, and I hope it's your highlight as well. Lily from Seattle. Yannick, thank you. Uh, uh, hopefully my beard will be as strong, or the topic will be as strong as my beard. Okay, so we're gonna talk about getting started with DevLink uh, in three ways, as we often do on this stream. We're gonna start with what is DevLink. So Victoria Plummer is gonna talk to us about what DevLink is, then we're gonna build live. We're actually gonna become React developers. We're gonna start in Webflow and we're gonna to add to an existing React app. And then we're gonna go into Q&A. So at any moment, if you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. Nelson is gonna help me curate those questions and bring them to Victoria. So that is our three-step plan for today. Extremely excited. So without further ado, I am extremely excited to welcome none other from our DevRel team, Victoria, Victoria Plummer. Victoria, welcome to the Workflow Series. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Uh, it's, it's, it's exciting, it's an exciting time. We've got so many folks that are super excited to learn about DevLink. I'm super excited to have you. Before we jump into DevLink, Victoria, how about a quick introduction into yourself and what you do at Webflow? Absolutely. So as you know, my name is Victoria and I head up content for developers at Webflow. So uh, Webflow has a couple developer products, including uh, the newly released DevLink uh, from Webflow Labs. Uh, but we also have an API and we support apps uh, that you can use with Webflow via the API. And so uh, work to create content, sample apps, example code, um, all of the guys that you need to be successful with our developer products. Amazing. And we're so honored to have you here. We've worked together in the past and so good to be back on a stream with you. Thanks. Um, now, well, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions today, but I think the most important one is what title would you dream for in the credits of the workflow series? Yeah, I think my favorite title would be no coder turned coder. Mm -hmm. um, because like you said, we've worked together for a really long time and we worked in the no code space. Uh, and I got bit by the bug uh, to understand, you know, how to talk to computers and how to make them respond in the way that I'd like them to. So now I'm a full on developer and work with developers every day to create apps, solutions to problems, automation, all that fun stuff that we love over here. Awesome. So coder tone turned coder. Uh, Nelson, if we can update Victoria's title in the credits. And go ahead and submit your name if you're watching, and maybe you'll get that title as well. Uh, and maybe by watching this, you'll consider yourself a coder as well. So Victoria, let's jump into today's topic. Uh, what is DevLink? And 
why is the G train always delayed? Those are the two things I want you to help me with. <laughs> I can't tell you why. Um, my uncle used to work for the MTA, so I can ask him. He retired after like 40 years or something. Um, but uh, I can talk about DevLink. Uh, I consider DevLink to be a bridge between designers and developers. Uh, you can design components uh, in Webflow that look the way you want them to, act the way you want them to, respond the way you want them to, and then you can send them uh, to a React project using DevLink. Uh, all the code will be exported, it'll be ready to go, and developers working in React can focus on um, connecting it uh, in the app how they'd like it to work. Got it. So design, develop, and Webflow bring to a developer who can incorporate it into a React app. That's that bridge, right? So being exactly. able to bridge between a Webflow developer and a React developer. But exactly. more specifically, what would you say is the benefit to you know folks, 80% uh, of the folks watching who are Webflow developers? And what is the benefit for those React developers uh, of using DevLink? Yeah, so I think one common example would be um, having a marketing site and then having a production app, like a SaaS app, uh, that runs on React. Uh, so while uh, Webflow is amazing for serving up um, static content or content driven by our CMS, uh, if you want to respond to user interactions with uh, fu extended functionality, uh, you'll need to use a React app, especially to have it respond quickly. Mm -hmm. And so the benefit for both Webflow developers and React developers is you can take something that you've designed um, and structured and set up in Webflow in, t in terms of you know, the styling, the CSS, um, the functionality there, um, and then use the same component, the same styling, all of that in a React app without having um, to really um, touch the design or styling components uh, or parts of the code. Got it. So I can stop me as a Webflow developer, or someone says, hey, I, I work in React, our project, our app is in React. I can say, hey, I, I, I can build for that. And as a company, if my marketing site is in Webflow where I'm creating a bunch of assets, I can then repurpose those assets you know, within the app and vice versa, right? If that app is in React. So you know, benefit from that React developer who's just like, hey, update the styles, I get them, right? Webflow can develop in an org. I have like a more unified look. So I'm and like the advanced part of Webflow in terms of like the interactions and setting visibility and things like that, you can still do those all in mm -hmm. Webflow. Those don't have to be um, then recoded um, or re-engineered in uh, React. Got it. Okay. So I think we've done the, the setup here. So I want to, how about this? I'm going to put my Webflow developer hat on, which I frankly always wear because I'm never not a Webflow developer. You right. can keep your React developer hat. And let's go into a React project and, and see how we would collaborate, right? How would we work together using DevLink? So Sounds fun. I'm going to go into my screen here. I'm going to share my screen. I still, you know, five years of Zoom and streaming, I still ask everyone uh, if they can see my screen. So you should see a bunch of code. I'm going to bring up our little app. This is our app. Uh, so we've built, we work for a job board company, right? Uh, and this is all built in React. Now, a good question I think I expect people to ask is, why was this built in React? And what is the value in general of building something in React? Yeah, so I would say the value here is the interactivity. And I'll talk about it a little bit more. So. 98% um, of web flights, websites, uh, they use JavaScript to incorporate some uh, functionality to create dynamic experiences. Even mm -hmm. Webflow, we use jQuery, um, but uh, React allows us to, um, it, there's a couple of things when you're serving websites. So if you have mainly static content that doesn't really change, like this pricing isn't going to change, mm -hmm. um, uh, then we then uh, you want to serve that content like all together. And right. so that's a, a lot of the static sites that you see. But if you want more interactivity and app-like experience and um, 
uh, pulling from APIs or pulling from dynamic data sources, uh, then you want to use something that can handle that uh, and call APIs uh, and serve that content like React, which is a, a front end framework. And so uh, as you see here, we're responding to the hover on the chart. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, these buttons uh, as well. Um, and this feature job list that is dynamic and um, that is driven by an API call that we're that we're making. Yeah. So here in this instance, you know, we are using Airtable as kind of our our backend, right? What I mean backend, like serving the data, as you mentioned. So if I make senior no code developer at AlphaTech featured, that is going to then be here. If I come here, there's a little bit of caching here. It's going to appear right here. Right, so you know we're using React because our backend, our data, we have to make those API calls to Airtable. But you might, you know, do it to Lever or Firebase, Superbase, any other kind of application, right, or or database. And that's why we've gone with React. Exactly. There are some cases where you know you just simply can't use the Webflow CMS or you can't use Webflow e-commerce because you need to use that dynamic data source. And so uh, using something like React. Uh, will help you uh, keep that dynamic uh, ability mm -hmm. uh, and still connect to those external data, data sources. Got it. So everything you all are going to see today is, you know, built by Ben. This amazing, here you go. That's Ben right there. Uh, so shout amazing. out to ben. ben. You can actually go grab this on GitHub uh, and rebuild this whole application on your side. If you click on the link in the description, uh, this is accessible. Uh, so everything we're doing today is already here. Uh, so just some context there. Okay. So I have- It got really dark. It got really dark on, on yeah, your side? Yeah, I think it's about to, to storm over here. Oh boy. <laughs> so we can hear you. We can see you. You're looking great. So we're good to go. Uh, let us know in the chat if Victoria is still audio's A up and okay. So let's, I have Webflow. I have this app. I also have the code that I showed at the beginning. Could you explain to me, Victoria, like what role does Webflow play here? Because- if I look at this, we're not going to this URL. How should I think about those three things together? Absolutely. So Webflow plays a really important role in this app. If we uh, looked at the app, we saw that all of the uh, sections of the React app are uh, components that are built in Webflow. And you build a React app by connecting or kind of like stacking components together. Mm. And so what we were able to do uh, with this or what Ben was able to do, amazing, amazing uh, guy and developer, uh, was able to uh, create these components in Webflow, style them the way he wanted, get um, the the text correct, get the positioning all correct, get the padding, all of the, all of the design elements that you really care about, and then export this uh, in uh, using DevLink into a React app. Okay, so every piece of this right here, right? So this kind of section at the top, right, so this section. is a component that we see right here. And how exactly. we bridge the website to the React app is via DevLink. How about, do you think it's worth showing just quickly how that uh, uh, works, right? Not maybe oh, not absolutely. the simple, but so yeah. talk to me about how do I find a component that I've built in Webflow in this kind of React app that we've synced using DevLink? Yes. So if you go over to your component section yes. in the components bar, you'll see uh, this little link icon. Uh, and if you hover over it, it says export components. And you're able to, uh, you'll have a little bit of configuration steps here and install and config. Uh, but once you, which are really straightforward, and once you uh, configure your project up in your local development environment, uh, you can then sync your components from your Webflow project by running this uh, this command uh, in the bottom there. Okay. So, uh, so let Aaron, me, I've copied that. I've gone into my terminal. I'm going to go ahead and run that command, right? Now it's, it's exporting the components from Webflow and then somehow bringing them into React. How, where does this, where do those now components now live in my React project right here? Yeah. So let, we've looked at this folder uh, over here on Dev the left where all of our, our structure is. Mm -hmm. um, we have a folder called DevLink. Yes. And then inside we can see that all of the components that we were listed in our components bar. Uh, our components menu in Webflow are now listed here. We have a CSS file, uh, which is the styling. We have a JS file, 
which has the structure. And then we have a, a TypeScript file because React uses TypeScript. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're able to then use or import these components that we have into our site. So our site is actually called index.tsx. Okay, so the each oh. one of these three files, like about hero, about mm -hmm. hero dot uh, uh, TypeScript, are and the CSS are the export from DevLink, right? That we're yeah. now syncing. So all of the styles are rebuilt here. So this is all of our components, and now our actual app, like where we were looking a moment ago, is called index.tsx. Now, for folks exactly. who are like, I'm a Webflow developer, I'm trying to give you like the structure. You don't necessarily know how to rack like write React, but we're just trying to understand how one thing goes to another. So let me know in the chat uh, 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 if there are any questions and we're gonna go ahead and continue here. So how do, do I go from that DevLink component right. into my actual app? Yes, so now that you have those components in your project, you can import them into your app, which is index.tsx or mm -hmm. the, the, the kind of single facing page uh, that, we're, that we're using. And so here you'll see we've imported a list of components, including job listing, new nav, the pricing grid. And so for any component that we want to add, we'll import it. And then now once we've imported, it's available to use within um, our app. So uh, now that we've imported it, you can scroll down. OK. And, and we can start looking at the structure of our page. So we can start looking at the, I think I would want to start at the nav bar sure. because people can see like how it's a, a, a stack of components, right? So we right. have the header or the head, we have the new nav bar, and then right below the nav bar, we have the hero. Yeah, right here. And then features. And stats. features, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So each one of those are components that we've built in Webflow that we've brought into. Okay. I'm starting to. I'm starting to feel this React thing. It feels pretty simple. It's just a bunch of components, you know, we've built in Webflow that are stacked in our. It's page. definitely gotten a lot cleaner and nicer since I learned React. Yeah. I will say that. <laughs> okay, so let us know in the chat if there are any questions about general kind of React structure here. I think Ben has has kind of whispered in my ear that he would want us to add a another testimonial. Okay. Right. So if we go to this. Uh, this page right here, he wants, you know, a new testimonial from a, a you know, someone right here. Okay. And uh, he's been nice enough to kind of give us what he wants that to look like. So uh, go Ben. If I go to the live page right here, we want to import this Webflow styled, you know, section, if we were div into React. How would we go about doing that? Yeah. Well, first let's make this testimonial a component. OK, so let's go ahead and create a component. We're going to call this testimonial. I mm -hmm. want to keep this static for now. So I'm creating a component. Okay. And there you go. I've created my component. And uh, like I said, uh, I consider DevLink the bridge. And so to cross the bridge, we need to, uh, every time we make a change, we need to cross the bridge again mm -hmm. um, and uh, run that sync command that we found in the components uh, menu where we were linking with the, the dev link export components. Okay. So I need to run this right here. Exactly. I'm doing both. I'm like, I know, uh, uh, Victoria is the developer, but I'm, I'm it's all on my screen. So, <laughs> so she's going to talk me through this, but I don't know what I'm doing. So I got to go here. I'm going to go into my terminal and I'm going to go ahead and sync right that yep. again. So let me so pop we're exporting that components. Success. Okay. So now that, where do I find that component that we've just built in Webflow. Yeah, we should be able to find it in that DevLink folder that we explored earlier. And we should scroll down and it should be alphabetical and we should find testimonial and the three, uh, exactly, the right. three file types. So now to use this in uh, index, our, in our app, we'll go to index.tsx. Okay, so this is where the actual, I'm just trying to understand. So this is where yes. the actual component lives now within our React, right? Yes. It's been exported out of Webflow and brought into React. So now we need to add it to our page. It exists in our project. Is that yes. right? Is that the right way of exp exp saying that? I don't know. Yes. It exists in our project, right? So we have exported it to our, our local project. And now we want to import it. Uh, we want to import that component into our, our apps page. Okay. 
So here are all the components that we can then use in the actual kind of index, right? So exactly. here we're going to bring in testimonial. You got it. Okay. All right. I'm and a then... React developer. I'm so close. <laughs> this is so much fun. Uh, okay. But that doesn't put it in my page. How do I actually add it to the page? So now you want to navigate through your page and how you've structured all the components so far and figure out uh, where you want to put that testimonial. So I think right after brands. Yes, I do think that this component right here, if I look yeah. at this, and let's just go check, like what does brands look like? Let me find it. Let me just add an instance right here. Okay, yeah, I have it twice here. So yeah, that is what I want. So it needs to be after this right here. So I'm going to go to the code. I'm going to find where we're kind of inserting, adding brands, and we're going to go ahead and how do I add, how so, do I add testimonial right there? Yeah. So just as you uh, see brands added, uh, you'll put the component name in between these two signs. I don't, I think they're brackets. I don't know. Lobsters. They are, or, they're lobsters. lobsters. I think that's the official. These are sideways must, and these are lobster pinces. Okay. If anyone so, has yeah. better suggestions in the chat, we're going with lobster pincers. Please give us the technical term because <laughs> I've just completely lost that one today. So we'll add testimonial. Uh, you'll see the IntelliSense works really, really nicely. Um, Oops. And for the most part, because yeah, we can just include that backslash there. There, there you go. go. Lobster, Lobs sideways lobsters, crabs. Maybe okay. I think lobsters is forward and crabs would be, I don't know. Yeah. Crabs is the, okay. Sideways crabs. Okay. Um, so I've added testimonial here. Now it is in my page. Right. Uh, so we want to save this. We're saving. And okay, we have testimonial. Amazing. <laughs> is that done? That's it? Oh, wow. Let's look. There she is. Oh, my God. That was. So I'm just going to update my LinkedIn profile here to React Developer. I, uh, you can all do that as well on your side. So just go to your LinkedIn. You are now all <laughs> React Developers. Um, before, Victoria, I, I've done this stream enough times to know that people are going to be very angry about the lack of... of uh... Yeah, it's bothering me too. Okay, so how do we update this? Do I just go in Webflow and do it? Yeah, let me go back to Webflow. Okay. And make your changes, what you'd like to see. Okay, so I'm going to double click. Let me go into the styling. I want to add, you know, maybe one rem of margin on each side. Okay. So let me actually add a padding. Padding yeah. makes more sense to me. One, maybe even one run like that. Okay. So how Amazing. do I then bring this change that I've now made in Webflow back into that React project we're working on? So every time we make a change, we want to uh, run that sync command, right? We want to cross the bridge. So go back to your project, run the sync command. Right here, this one. Did we click piece. out of the component to save it? Oh, because yes. Let's click out. <laughs> that okay. changes that. Okay, so now it's updated in the component. There we go. Five rem. See, people are. I added padding. Ben, I you know maybe I'll update it after. We'll update it after if there's time. Let's go through that. People are always nitpicky on how much spacing I put in on this. There we go. So my expectation here is that we don't need to do anything because we've made that change and we've crossed the bridge. I believe so. Okay. There we go. We've got a little bit. We can, I should have put five rem. Do we have time? <laughs> okay, let's do it one more time for the, for, for everyone's sake, for everyone's five rem, five rem. Okay, there we go. Let's go back here. Let's click out. Right. We go here. We run that again. Okay, let's let that run. Success. There we go. Refresh. Oh, we did not get it. Did we not click out long enough? Let's do that yeah. one more time. Uh, yeah, save your, save your file. There we go. Oh, I forgot to save. There we go. Now we have it. We have our five Amazing. rem. There we go. See? There you go. Go us. Now, Ben wanted five rem, but he's, he's also asking something else. He wants to make this text dynamic. So there's some... some, some Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And there were some <laughs> questions around properties and things like that. So how do I make something dynamic? Yes. In Webflow, in React, like talk to me a little bit about this. So 
in your design, you probably know what you want to be dynamic, what you want to change, or you know information is going to come from an external data source, but you want you still want to be able to design um, some content. So you can still do that in Webflow. And then knowing that that's going to be dynamic, uh, set up some properties uh, in order for that to change based on where that information is coming from in your React project. So let's say that this was uh, coming from you know, a set of Google reviews or something like that, mm. um, that change every day or the data set grows larger every day. Um, you want to be able to uh, uh, set up your design and, set, and know that it's going to be responsive uh, in uh, Webflow and then uh, export that to React. So to do that, uh, we're going to uh, work with some things called properties in components, uh, which are a native part of components. Okay. So I'm going to, you're telling me that I have to specify that something is going to change or has the yes. possibility that's going to change. And we're going to call that a property. Yes. Is, do I do that in Webflow? Yes, you do. Okay. So just like I would have a, you know, a property in my component, I can now kind of uh, uh, add a, is that, is that, a, should I add it just like I do in Webflow where I can make something change every time I have an instance of that component? Yes. Okay. So let's say I want this to change. Do I yes. just simply add a property like this? Yes. And you can call this property quote. Okay. You got it. Okay. So now I've said that quote might change every time this instance, you know, is added to my Webflow website, but how do I make that change in React? Yes. So let's uh, click out of this to save that change. Okay. And then we've made a change. So let's cross the bridge and sync again in our Webflow project. I, I mean, we, in our React project. We need some t-shirts like cross, uh, uh, you know, cross the bridge, you know, de developer and Webflow and cross. You know, well, some people will make that happen. <laughs> Someone is going to make that happen. So crossing the bridge means syncing. So I'm going to go right. ahead and sync. So I'm syncing. And now there should be a change in my testimonial component. Should we yeah. go look at the actual component in the DevLink folder? Okay. Let's do it. Okay. DevLink, testimonial, JS. Yep. And you'll see right where it says export function testimonial, we have a variable called quote. Mm. Uh, and then that quote is exported as whatever it was in Webflow. So as a fast growing tech company, tech company, <laughs> finding top tier development talent, can't read anymore. But we can then change this on our instance of the app if we go to our index.tsx. Uh, okay. There you go. Um, and in our testimonial, we have. Let me find uh, it. So control F, testimonial. That's, that's the. What we imported. Yes, here. And that's the implementation of it, exactly. Um, so now you can put quote as your property um, or as your props, and then you'll do curly mustache sideways curly mustaches, and then inside double quotes and whatever the static text you want it to be. And so while Aaron is adding static text here, you can imagine this being a variable coming from a uh, external source. So like, again, if this were Google reviews, it would be, you know, you know, the next review uh, and the text that was in that review is a variable versus just static text uh, that we're adding right now. Okay. So what let me say that back to you if I understand yes. this correctly. We've added the component. Yeah. We've said the property quote is equal to this. Uh, and now yep. my expectation is when I save this, this is what appears in my website. Oh my gosh, I just realized what you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that works. That's, That's amazing. So uh, uh, now I actually have that concept of dynamic. So if something's going to change, uh, there's some questions around, you know, how complex of the data can we pass uh, into that? Can, can anything be passed in? Talk to me a little bit about. That's a great question. So uh, if we look at the properties in Webflow, mm -hmm we can see that uh, in any component properties, you have specific properties. So in manage properties, yeah, we can just you can set a uh, text property, you can set rich text, image, links, videos. Uh, and then we have two Webflow specific properties called runtime props and slots. Okay. So these are the things we can add in Webflow. Mm -hmm. What 
is a runtime prop and what is a slot? Yes. Uh, so I think we have examples of this. If you head over to our job board app, uh, all the way at the top there is a button. Uh, and if you click that button, we get an alert that say, can't post a job, this is a demo site. But if we did have, if this wasn't a demo site, you could see uh, posting the job would uh, send form information to uh, post it to a specific endpoint uh, mm -hmm. to update our Airtable database or something like that. Right. That is not something that um, currently uh, Webflow can do. It can do, uh, it can send form information if you're using a, a form um, element, but if you uh, want to kind of add something new or add yourself to a queue or something like that and post to an endpoint, uh, that's not necessarily something Webflow can do. Uh, so this is uh, an extension of wh what someone asked about how complex uh, data or how com uh, what is the complexity of data that you can send through properties. Mm -hmm. um, there are the, um, the regular properties like text, uh, video, image, things like that. But then when you want to um, kind of have Webflow uh, react or respond or listen to an event, mm. uh, and then uh, you can run a function from that. That's when we would use uh, runtime props. Okay. So runtime prop is, you know, I want to send a browser alert. I want to run a function. I want to do something that I can't kind of, that exists outside of Webflow and has to be coded in React. Now, so I, I want to explain a little bit sure, more. Sure, go for it. Possible. So as we were talking about serving static sites, serving everything um, at one time or serving everything um, to the customer, uh, or sorry, not to the customer, sorry. Um, but uh, uh, what a runtime prop is, is it's actually listening for an input uh, mm. while the app is running versus uh, sending an input before the app renders the site. So let's say from what we just did with the props from the uh, quote, whereas uh, the uh, before it built the website and rendered it to you, it went and got that uh, mm. review from Google Reviews API and then served that up there. Uh, the runtime prop instead is listening uh, uh, during the app as it's running. And then once it gets that event that it's listening for, uh, reacts to that. Okay. Okay. That's actual, that's where the word runtime comes from, if I understand correctly. It's waiting until something happens in the app to do something else. In yes. this case, it's saying, Hey, wait until you know someone clicks on this and then send that alert. So, just so people can understand this, and maybe for myself, let's go into how this looks in Webflow, and then we'll see how it looks in React, just so folks can kind of understand here. So, yeah, if I want to add, so I'm here in my nav bar, and I go into my nav link. I have a runtime prop that I've called post job, right? So I've just called it that. It's not handled in Webflow. Can you help me understand? how I see that in the React app in the code. Absolutely. So we've already exported this. So let's look at our app. OK, I'm here in, do you want me to index or in the actual component? Let's look at the component first. Sure, OK. Oh, no, we've already looked at props and components. We can just do this in the index. OK, sure. So if I go into the index and let me find, uh, this one was called nav, if I'm correct. Yep. It's in the nav, and then we have post job. That's the yes. property. So that's the that's the runtime prop that we have here. Yes, and um, we're uh -huh. it's listening for on click, and okay. then responding, and then on click, it's responding with a function. So when uh, someone clicks, it's responding with a uh, a function, and so we're using um, an alert pop up. But this could again could be. Um, a fetch request uh, to, uh, uh, and posting something to the, to an endpoint, requesting uh, new data. So uh, sending, uh, instead of preloading it, only um, getting information from an API when requested, mm. so on and so forth. Okay, understood, understood. So this is essentially saying the post job, the thing that it does is wait until someone clicks mm -hmm. and then sends an alert. But it could be like, hey, go fetch additional data, go, you know, knock Aaron on the head. I'm not sure what it can do, but it's got to do something when that thing is clicked. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So that was the first one. That was runtime props. There's some questions in the chat uh, around what are slots. So if I go right. here, I also, I have runtime prop, which we just covered. What is a slot? 
So I, we also have an example of slots in uh, this visual development job board. Uh, ben really thought of everything. So if you scroll down, you should see something that is also responding to you. It's pretty dynamic. Uh, this chart here. Okay. So uh, this chart uh, is not standing alone. It's actually part of the component above it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this is all one component. Exactly. Got and it. so uh, slots really just allow you to uh, use a component inside of another component. So you could think of uh, if you created a button and I uh, created a button as a component and styled it in the way that you wanted and then uh, put that button inside of a card. And now um, the card component uh, like uses both the styling used for the card as well as the button. And then if you put the card in a larger component that was like a four card mm. markup or something, uh, you kind of it's how many levels deep can you get is uh, is what I like to think about it as. Uh, but in this example, uh, we're also showing that using Webflow components doesn't lock you out of using other components you might want to in your React app. So this chart is an example of Chart.js uh, or uh, implementation of Chart.js. Uh, and so we're able to use that, even able to say that we're using that um, in Webflow. Okay, so I have a component, right? Like this one that is composed of either multiple components, right? So like an internal in Webflow. So imagine I have a card that is a button plus a header or, or content. I can say slot those in. So create that little card and slot in three existing components. Exactly. Or I can slot in an external component that lives yes. outside of what? Okay. How, Any how, component you like. Let's, let's see how this looks in, let me try to find that chart. Let me just see how this looks. Okay, so I do see the top. Yes. Talk. So he, what is, this is empty. Right. So there's a div, empty div there, but if we look, it actually um, has a slot uh, and it's going to slot in the chart in that div. Okay. So I've styled the top, but that, that chart is like outside of Webflow, right? We could, this could be a component that, that already exists in Webflow. We would just name it, right? Right. But in so this case, it. it's external. Right. So we haven't gotten that chart in there yet. We've just created a space for it or a slot for it. Oh, okay. That's where the word slot comes. I understand. You know, <laughs> took me a little bit. Okay. So how how do I then in React add that chart in? Yeah. So let's go to our React project and let's look for uh, what was it? Stats. I think so. Let me check. Uh, this is called stats. That's the yep. whole component. So let me try to find that. Stats. Okay. So in the stats, we have a slot uh, property. There we go. And then uh, we're able to add a component within it. So instead of static text, instead of a function like we would with runtime props, we're able to um, add a chart. Okay. And so, component. so where does this chart come from? Yeah. So if we look in our project folders, we can go outside of DevLink. So collapse DevLink folder. And we see that above we have a, a components folder that has a chart JS in there as well. And so this is a, a, a component from an external library uh, that we can still use in our React app. Okay, so we've created chart.js, which has comes from the chart JS library, and we've mm -hmm. created a component called chart that we want to embed into a Webflow component that we've pulled in through sync. Yes, exactly. You got it. This, that was a tongue twister. Okay. It was. It's all turtles. It's all components all the way down is what, you know. So right here, that's how we're importing it. Exactly. Okay. Um, so that, I think, helps me understand every part of uh, uh, kind of what it takes to build. Is there anything else before we jump into Q&A that you think we should highlight or show? Uh, there are a lot of questions I want to get to in the Q&A. Uh, around syncing and how that works. Anything we should show, Victoria, that you think is valid before we jump into Q&A? Um, I'm not sure if we want to show this just because I don't know where Ben incorporated this, but I do just want to reiterate that not only does, does CSS styling here work, but also um, interactions mm -hmm. um, and visibility can also be set with DevLink. And yep. so there's documentation on how to do that, uh, but it's there there's a lot of power here that you can design visually in Webflow um, and then cross that bridge or, you know, the gap is made closer um, by being able to hand off to a developer uh, with, you know, 
almost production ready code. Okay, so our first question came from Bobby and it was, can it run in interaction? And Look, I got you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the answer is, if you have a Webflow interaction, it's going to be included right in what your export is and it'll be there right uh if you want to say if i and correct me if i'm wrong here victoria it's if you want to run something like click this button do this other thing that would be a runtime prop yes if you want to if you want to so no if you you don't have to set runtime props for like i have if used devlink before where i have said on hover uh you know, animate something mm -hmm. that I did not need to set props for right. because uh, there wasn't anything like there wasn't anything in the React application that I need to incorporate into um, that interaction in order for that to happen. Right. I didn't need to pass a variable in to run a function. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do a browser alert. I really just wanted to run that animation. So if I set the animation up uh, in Webflow, it will uh, run in my react app uh there is a little bit of configuration uh that you'll want to do for animations but that is also um covered in the documentation okay got it so there are some questions that i want to make sure that come from the chat so a few things here drop your questions in the chat make sure to add your name to the credits join the beta don't forget to join the beta in the description you get access instantly you can play around with devlink you can show ben that you are can build cooler things than ben potentially uh, but that's a high bar. That's a high bar. Yeah, that's so, a very high bar. Um, so I want to, there's some questions that, um, there's one question that came up at the beginning, which is, can existing React components be brought into Webflow? Great question. Not currently. Okay. It's not something that is supported. Um, understandably that it would be incredible. It is a one-way bridge at this time. Okay. Uh, so question from Hadi, do you need to be on the paid plan? Uh, I believe the answer is no. You can get access to beta right away. Go ahead and build. Uh, next question, and I'm seeing a lot of questions. Uh, is React the only framework that you can build uh, on DevLink or Sync? Not Sync. Well, yes, Sync, sure, you, uh, using DevLink. Currently, yes. So... Uh, Ben has built, I believe, a React app and with Next.js, excuse me. Um, but we're looking in the future to incorporate other popular frameworks like Vue.js. Oh, I got a lot of burpees. Yeah. Um, and so the, the vision for DevLink is to be able to work with any front-end framework, but currently in the beta, um, we're only supporting React. Okay, understood. So let me just make sure going through the questions. We had some submitted up front. Right, there's one question in the chat is, what... Webflow elements are supported in DevLink. Yes, so uh, most of the Webflow elements are supported in Dev in DevLink, uh, with the exception of uh, Lottie files and uh, the Lightroom elements. Uh, with uh, Lottie, I know that there are some libraries you can incorporate into your app, so you don't lose that functionality. And then uh, additionally, anything that is Webflow specific, so Webflow CMS, Webflow e-commerce, Webflow users, uh, the app doesn't have the context to pull in um, natively to pull in that information from the the those products. And so those anything to do with that uh, are not supported as well. Okay. There's a question that uh, quite a few folks had. So if I bring in a component from you know, using DevLink and make changes to that component in React, right? And then sync it again. Do I lose my changes in that React project that I've made in that project? And how could I, are there, I think there's one solve from Federico around that. So how should people think about that? So from my understanding, yes. Uh, you would lose that unless you change the name or you change uh, like, but you know what? Don't quote me on that actually. I believe you would lose that if Federico has a solve. Federico is the uh, one of the drivers and like all stars behind DevLink. So major shout out to Federico. Um, but yeah, I would love to know how we would, be, would get around that. Yeah. So solve from Federico is uh, have it here. I'm not going to highlight it because I can't quite find it. But is yes, any local changes in your React will be overwritten in that sync. But you can always bring a component into kind of natively in your React app once you've made those changes. So any new sync 
doesn't overwrite your existing component. Got it. Um, question is, can I create components for an entire design system for a SaaS application? Victoria? The sky is the limit on <laughs> your imagination there. I think you can. Um, I think it's a great use of it. Uh, if you are a web a Webflow wizard, have all the kind of keyboard shortcuts and can yeah. kind of compose in Webflow and then um, export it out, uh, I, I think that, that would be an amazing use of DevLink. Perfect. Uh, so question is, do we need to publish the page we are on, right? So I guess this is a question, does the Webflow publishing, is it tied to DevLink sync? My understanding, those two are completely separate. Yeah, from my understanding as well. Yeah. Um, and just going back to the design system, mm -hmm. um, if I can, um, I, I think you can, you know, what you can do in Webflow is what you can export um, for the most part into React. So um, there might be some things about a design system like variants or things like that, that um, Webflow uh, doesn't get into currently. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to make sure that like we're, we're separating those two, but I have seen um, some really cool templates uh, that are creating kind of UX and, and design um, UIs uh, using DevLink. It's really, really cool. Yeah, and the second app that we have in GitHub, uh, so if you go to the clonables in the link is a weather app that we shown at Webflow Conf uh, uh, that you know has the kind of like a weather application that fetches data uh, weather real time. Uh, you can go ahead and get that uh, uh, and you know install it locally. Um, there's a question from Kyle, which is, can we show how it consumes the data? Uh, so yeah, I'm happy to show that. Let's go into Webflow. Uh, sorry, int, I'm used to saying Webflow, but we're actually going to go into VS Code. Uh, and again, Kyle, you can go and download. We're not going to spend a ton of time here, but you can go ahead and you know, have this locally and explore. So if I'm not mistaken right here, right, we're simply repeating uh, right here. Right. Yeah. So we're so the jobs data is an array, which is um, a list of information. So a list of jobs, uh, and then we're using array map uh, in JavaScript, which basically lets you go through each item in that list in that array, and then um, output uh, create a custom output. And so whatever you do in this section that says return uh, will be done for every item in that array. So for every item in this jobs listing, or sorry, every item in this jobs data array, we're going to create a jobs listing component that has uh, these props. And so this company name prop is now getting the company name uh, from that item in the array. The listing name is getting the um, listing name from that item in the array, so on and so forth. And so that enables us to uh, dynamically create a list um, so if you see in Webflow, uh, on our Webflow project, we only have one styled component uh, for a job. It's very try, small. Let me, let me try to find <laughs> it. Yeah, let me try to get it. I can also just bring it in somewhere. I think it's right here. Yes. Uh, no, it's not student plans. Here we go. This is right, right here. So this exactly. is the component that we built once. Right. We built it once and we implemented it once, but we implemented it inside of an array map. Um, so when we go to visual development jobs, all of the jobs that came through our um, post request, or sorry, our get request from Airtable um, are then uh, repeated uh, in this component. Okay. And so that's why the props are so incredible because, as I said before, instead of just having uh, static text for a prop, you now can, um, excuse me, add a, a variable. Uh, with varied information uh, from a list of information or from wherever you'd like. Got it. Okay. So a few more questions. We're going to go to maybe one or two more questions. Um, we are probably not going to understand why the G train is always 20 minutes late. That unfortunately we're not going to cover, but we're going to get to that one day. So a few questions. Go ahead and drop your last questions. Make sure to fill out uh, uh, the credits. We're going to get to that in just a moment. Uh, so question that we have. So. Uh, let me go back so we can see you and I. What prevents a Webflow developer from breaking, or I would say from making changes, right, that, you know, kind of go live? Is there anything that they can do? 
in the React app? Yeah, in general. Like, sh are there best practices around syncing, things you can yeah, do? Yeah, good question. So I believe we included some in the documentation. If not, that's on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I think the best practice is communication. Um, you know, communicate with developers uh, with, of what the design should be, um, what it should look like. Uh, from a static perspective, then as well as um, an implemented perspective, where the everybody identify where the data is coming from, and so what should be static, what should be dynamic, what should have those props, right. and then I think, like we said, I think the only thing that would have an impact on the React app is syncing over changes after changes have been made in the React app, and so um, for best practices, it would be get um make sure that the that your webflow components are um being all the design elements all the design portions are being managed in webflow before uh you start uh changing things in your react app got it okay and uh, i think federico added a little supplement there which is okay. you can uh sync certain components right so you don't have to sync everything you can sync with certain components and that's in the documentation Oh, and that's awesome. Thanks, Federico. <laughs> so I think those are all the questions. I think maybe... Um, so someone said, could you build all of your components in Webflow and export them to React? Yes, that is that is exactly what DevLink does. Uh, so I think that's it for today. So Victoria, we're going to jump into the credits here in just a moment. Where should people go? to keep learning about DevLink, what should be their next step after this stream? I believe your next step should be to go to webflow.com slash DevLink. Yes. Uh, so there you can sign up for the beta. You can get additional information uh, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, sorry, documentation. You can sign up to your beta. You can get all that good stuff there. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to run the credits. Thank you so, so much, Victoria, one more time for joining us. Will you, you stay with us for the credits? Yeah. OK, let's go ahead. Let's jump in. Let's give some love for Victoria. And let's see who joined us today in, I'm going to go over here. They're all over here. So it should be starting in a moment here. All right. We've got Victoria, our coder, Tone No Coder, Hellwing, and Samson got that as well. Assistant nice. to the original manager, Austin. <laughs> We've got Alcoriel, uh, Bradley, Jigglypuff, Marcus. We've got Tony, John, Brittany, Chris, Sky. Prototype also, love it. <laughs> We've got Chris, uh, Jessica, Juan, Penny, Bobby, Tamer. We've got some code wranglers, our UX unicorns. Our animation Dream alchemist, waiver. Samuel, Alicia. <laughs> Victoria, one more time. Thank you so, so much for joining. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And I will see you all back here in two weeks. And Nelson will be back next week. Bye, everyone.